Hello everyone and welcome to the Faculty Lounge today. We're glad you could stop by. Uh, we are lucky enough to have Jared Covili from our office here in Salt Lake or in, at the University of Utah uh, presenting to us today. He's going to talk about Adobe's Creed of Cloud and uh, demo a few things I think in Photoshop for us. Um, the Creative Cloud is uh, sort of a new thing with Adobe and it can be a little confusing and uh, hopefully he's going to clear up some of that confusion for us. So. Uh, just a reminder, if you got a question or a comment, or if you want to heckle Jared, feel free to use the chat room over there on the over, on the lower left-hand side. And with that, uh, I'm going to uh, let Jared uh, get up and rolling. Feel free to heckle in the chat room. That's, that's what we need more of. Well, welcome, everybody. Good to have you here today. Um, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about, uh, as Tim mentioned, Adobe's Creative Cloud. We're going to be talking a little bit about Adobe's Creative Cloud and showing you some some different reasons why having access to uh, this software in a constant update will help you in the different things that you use. Today, um, I want to start out by just talking a little bit about the Creative Cloud and uh, share with you a little video clip that comes from Adobe that illustrates a little bit about how software and accessing programs is changing. So let's take a look at this real quick. This is Adobe Creative Cloud. What's it all about? Creative work requires freedom of movement, space, and play. However, problems are caused by licensing issues, high purchasing costs, and the pressure to always have the most current version. This creates a lot of expenses over time. Fortunately, we now have the Creative Cloud from Adobe. This includes the complete Creative Suite product portfolio, such as Photoshop, InDesign, or Illustrator, and many more tools and services. In other words, the entire range of Adobe products is available under one roof for download. The cloud grows every month, and new programs and services and updates are added too. This takes place automatically, and the new features are available immediately to subscribers. Simply install the products onto the desktop. And what about the cost? The small monthly payments for the subscription can be booked as operating expenses. This applies to individual products too, of course. And the big initial costs are a thing from the past. Individual users can get Creative Cloud for $30 a month. It also costs around $30 for students and teachers. And business owners, such as Max, can purchase Creative Cloud for Teams for less than $50 a month. This way, they can remain flexible and have the most current versions at their fingertips, meaning that they are always up to date. There are no more limits for creativity. A dream. Would you like to find out more? Visit us at adobe.com slash creative cloud for further information.
need. I have a new icon up in my toolbar that shows you what tools I've installed. It also shows you what tools are available here. So you can see that I have access to lots of different tools. Now, not all of the tools are available with each individual district's license as it depends which tools they purchased in on. But like you noticed, several of the major tools, including Dreamweaver, InDesign, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, Acrobat, these are all tools that you have access to as part of the Creative Cloud. Um, but you notice here, um, now I'm on a trial version, so you can see it's asking me to use the word try. I'm, I'm not going to do that right now. So we can just kind of see those are some of the tools that I have access to, um, and those are the things that I can update. Now, if something came out on Photoshop right now because I've installed it, it would you would see that it would show a new update is available, and the next time I launch this, it would update automatically. One other neat little feature in here that I love in this Creative Cloud is this View Tutorials button. So you can see it pulls up and shows me new versions of tutorials that illustrate some of the tools that are available. And the tutorials are geared for your latest version of Creative Cloud. So I hope as we kind of get started in here, we can see not only do we have access to the programs, but we have access to a lot of really nice information through uh, this Creative Cloud. Lots of tutorials and lots of helps to have your experience be one of the best ones you can have. Okay, let's get in and show some Photoshop then. Um, this is one of the tools that I had never had access to before downloading the Creative Cloud. As you look at this photo here, we've got some bison out there and kind of they're, they're out there on the range, right? And this picture, pretty good picture, but there's one glaring error that you can see with this picture. Um, you'll notice that we're behind kind of some fencing or some, some roped off areas here. So before, there's a lot of different tools that we might use to cover this up. But in the latest version of Photoshop, we've got a great tool. It's called the Content Aware Fill Tool, and it makes cleaning up a photo like this a snap. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to grab a selection tool. Now, I'm just grabbing the um, marquee tool, but all I want to do is just get a little selection here around one of those wires there. See, so yeah, I just uh, put a little box around that wire. Now, a shortcut way for you to uh, access the Content Fill tool, if you're on a PC, it's to hit the Backspace button. If you're on a Mac, it's to hit the Delete key. When I hit that key, with that area selected, the Fill option displays, and it gives me an option to use something called the Content Aware. So, with one click, Content Aware samples the area around the picture and it replaces my selection with what it sees as what would be in the background. I mean, hard to tell that I did anything there. Let's do it again on the top. So again, I've got my marquee tool selected. I'm going to go across this wire, give myself a little selection here, and when I hit the delete key on my keyboard, the fill option displays and it gives me the content aware tool. And now when I select OK, one second later we don't have that wire going across that picture. And I didn't really do anything on this to do that. I just used the content aware and it filled everything else. Awesome. Well that's a pretty basic example, right? Let's show one that's a little bit more complicated than that. We won't save this one. Let's go to this picture where we've got a guy kind of hanging out here on a wall. Now this absolutely blew my mind when I saw this for the first time. Uh, instead of using the marquee tool, we're going to come down to a selection in our photo. Um, one of the tools down here is the spot healing brushes on the top. I call it the band-aid tool, but if you click and hold, you'll get access to a few other tools as well. The tool that we're going to look at right now is called the Content Aware Move Tool. So think of what I'm going to do here. I'm going to highlight the gentleman that's in this photo. I'm going to select him then and I'm going to move him to a different area on the photo. It'll allow me to move him and it will blend the edges of my photo and it will actually replace where he was 
with content aware. It'll match the background here. It'll match this wall. So let's go ahead and give this a try and show you just how easy this tool is to use. So I'm coming out here and I'm going to give myself a little bit of room around the outer edge of this guy. Okay, so I'm just coming in and again I'm just kind of drawing a selection on the screen around this guy. And now as I come up, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to complete my little selection. Okay. So, I've just made a selection of the area on this gentleman. If I want to fine tune this a little bit, I can come up here into the properties bar. You'll see in the properties bar that one of my options is to move. That's the tool I want to use. And my adaptation level gives me everything from strict to loose. That just means how close do you want us to sample as we go around this uh, selection. I'll just keep it on the default, which was medium. And now I'm going to come down and I'm going to click and move my selected object to a different part of the screen. When I let go, watch the magic that happens. It samples the wall fills it in so now we don't see the guy. I mean that isn't real, right? That guy was standing in front of that wall. So this has took the object, moved it onto a different part of my screen, and now when I hit my deselect up here in my toolbar, it matches that screen. I saw a whoa from our chat room. That is a whoa moment. I, I will say that. So again, think of this. If we, if you were like us and have an older version of Photoshop, some of these tools weren't available in CS5 or CS4. And now, as you get that updated version of Photoshop through the Creative Cloud, um, you can move things from one part of the photo to another. And that was really a snap, wasn't it? I mean, just grab that object and move it to a different part of the photo. Now, you can imagine there's certain photos that work better on stuff like this. This is a good background, right? Because it's a it's a nice simple pattern and it's kind of a repeating pattern but it's not precise so that it's really easy to make us kind of filter in some of those things. So that's that's one tool that we learned about just by uh, getting access to this creative cloud. Let's look at one more tool that I think will also blow your minds. We won't save that picture. So here we have an elephant. Okay, and in this selection, I'm just going to show you a couple things that you can do with this. Now before, once you had a picture, it was pretty much a static image. There wasn't much we could do with it. But there's a tool in the latest versions of Photoshop called Puppet Warp. And uh, Tim and I and Rob, we went to a training a few months ago where a Photoshop uh, instructor from Adobe was there and he showed us this tool. Absolutely blew our minds. So notice what I have here, just quickly, before I get started. I just want to show you something. Over on my Layers panel, over on the right side of my screen, um, there's already been a little bit of work set up here. So the elephant has actually been separated from the picture using a mask. So if you haven't done that before, we don't really have time to get into that in this tutorial, but uh, we have done other tutorials in the past where we show some things about layer masking. Anyway, it's just a way that you can pull an object out of a photo. Okay, I'll actually show you a little example of it in a couple of minutes. But that's the first step, is to grab the elephant and put it on its own layer. So on one layer we've got the elephant, on the other layer we've got the background. Now, we're going to come up under the, let's see which mode it is, it's under the Edit menu. And about halfway down the menu here, you're going to see an option called the Puppet Warp. Now when I hit this puppet warp, it puts kind of a grid over the elephant. If I want to increase uh, the level of this so we get more points, it'll make it so it's a little finer tuned. Okay, You can do more or less. Um, but now I want to show you a couple things that I'm going to do here. When I bring my cursor onto the screen, it shows up as a push pin. This is going to allow me to set some rigid points, things that I don't want to move. Okay, but it also allows me to put in some flexible points. Now I'm coming in here and watch what happens when I put in some points as far as kind of like a rigid, uh, uh, well what's kind of a, the best way to determine, it's kind of like a joint. So we're going to create a little joint by moving that those push pins. 
Now I'm going to click on the trunk and look what I'm doing with that photo. I'm able to take that trunk and move it into a different position on the canvas. Just like we saw with our content fill, because the elephant and the background are separated from each other now, we have the ability to make that trunk look like it moved without changing the whole picture. If I want to make the elephant lower his head just a little bit, again, I can put a rigid point up here kind of on the top, another point a little bit lower, and I can make him look like he's lowering his head. Okay, I mean how amazing is that? When I hit my accept command, you're gonna see that we have completely moved that elephant around from when you first came into the picture. He's got the trunk down there, it looks like he's picking up grass and he's getting ready to eat it, doesn't it? Let's try this one more time and show it to you again. Okay, another photo here that we've got. In this instance, we have a flower. Okay, again, if you look over here in my layers panel, this one we've got a little bit. I've done a little bit better job. I have different layers here, so you can see there's the original picture, there's the picture without the flower in it. And now here's the flower on its own layer. Again, I'm going to come up under my edit menu and I'm going to click on my puppet warp, and there's my flower. Now, as I give myself some joints points. You can see that I can move. Oops, I can move the whole flower, but I want to come down here and put a point so that stays. And now, as I kind of move around on the leaf, you're going to see that I'm just really manipulating that leaf. If I come up to the top, I can manipulate the head of the flower, can't I? So you can kind of see what I'm doing there. And as I accept this change, turn off some of my layers. This is our before, and there's our after. All done with one photo. So instead of me making lots of, I mean, I can't even tell you how long something like this would have taken a few years ago. And now it's really just a few short clicks using uh, this tool called the Puppet Warp Tool. Now, I should mention to you, we saw a lot of these in that training I, I mentioned earlier. But if you go into uh, that tutorial section that I was showing earlier, there are so many great tutorials on how to do these little tricks. Um, there's also a, one website that I might just mention. I'm going to pull it up here just so you can see it real quick. Um, it's called Adobe TV. If you've never been into Adobe TV before, uh, Adobe just has hundreds, if not thousands, of three-minute tutorials where they show you how to go through and do a lot of these different tips and tricks. So if some of these things you're just mind blown and you're thinking, how will I remember this? Well, first thing you can do is you can watch the archive of this faculty launch presentation. But secondly, you can, uh, you can go to Adobe TV and you can watch all of these tutorials and more. I mean, they just have hundreds, if not thousands, of these little tutorials that you can do. Well, I'm going to do one more. Well, I got two more. Hopefully we have time for two more things. I'll come to this girl here in just a moment. One of the things I want to do is I want to show you how to Photoshop faces real quick. We've done this in previous uh, exercises in the faculty lounge, but they're making it so easy that it's hard not to want to show you the new tip today. So the first step I've got to do is I've got to go out and grab two photos that I want to pull in. Now one of the challenges in the past has been pulling in photos, pulled them into their own separate projects. So if I went in and opened up two photos, they wouldn't be layers in the same project, they'd be on separate uh, project files. But now in Photoshop, I come under my file, and if I come down to this little menu called a script, it actually has an option to load files into a stack. So I can take two pictures, and I can find, you know, examples of those real quick. Let's just grab a couple. If I come into my Dropbox, I know I've got a couple of pictures here that I want to show you. So I've got some photos of uh, some of my family members here, and I'm going to show you how to do this real quick. I'm going to open those two photos in a stack. So you'll see when they come in, in my layers panel, I'm going to have two separate photos here. Let's show you photo one, and then there's photo two. Now, in photo one, the kid in the green shirt in the back row is not looking. In photo two, he is looking. But do you notice that the zoom on these two pictures is slightly off? So they're not exactly lined up. Well, that was a big problem before in Photoshop. 
But I'm going to show you a nice little trick that you can do. I'm going to select both of those images. And when I come underneath uh, my edit menu, there's an option about halfway down that says auto align the layers. So it's going to make sure that it stretches or shrinks one of the pictures so that these two images line up with each other. I'm going to say OK on that. So it's going to make those two pictures line up. So when you look, when I go from one to two, the kid in the green shirt is the same size in both of those pictures. Okay. And I want to fix this head up here on the top. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use tools. Now these aren't new tools, a couple of these. The new thing was what I just showed you a moment ago. But I'm going to use my layer mask tool to put a little layer here on the top picture. Let me grab my zoom tool real quick because I want to zoom in on this kid's let me grab my zoom. I want to zoom in here on this kid just a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm going to do. And I, Again, in the interest of time, I won't finish this, but we'll just kind of show you how fast you can do some of this stuff. I'm going to grab my brush. And in Photoshop, when you're using the brush, you kind of deal between black and white. But because I'm on a layer mask, watch what happens when I paint with a white or a black brush. I can pull in the face that's behind. And as I just kind of match these things up and line it up here, in just a second or two, you're going to see how I'm going to bring in this face. Okay, now I'm going pretty fast, right? So I'm not taking the time that I might need to to completely line this up. But if I wanted to spend about five minutes, you can see how I'm bringing that in. Okay, let's zoom out just for a second so you can see what I'm talking about here. Now if I just clean this up just a little bit, again, kind of come in here and just clean up his hair and kind of touch this up. In just a minute, you would have a tough time telling me what I did in there. Okay, and that's a tool that would have taken me a long time before. I mean, to line up those heads and do all this body work and that, and you can see in just a few short seconds, I've pulled that one head from the body in picture one, and I've put that into picture two. Okay? I mean, amazing little techniques that we can do now to, uh, to add to our photos. Well, let's show you one last little thing that we've got. Let's see here. Where's my, where's my girl? Oh, I lost her. Let me go grab her real quick. And then we'll take a couple minutes for questions here if there's any questions. So one last thing that I just wanted to show you, a lot of times you have a selection like this and that can be, something like this can be really hard to work on in Photoshop. I'm going to duplicate it real quick just because that's what we do here. So I've got this girl. Now I'm going to come over and grab my quick select tool just so that I can come around and kind of select the girl, right? Not, not taking a lot of time here as I kind of come around but I'm going to try and select as much of her as I can. Okay. Now, we, we do this quite often, and then you notice that when I start working on this girl, there's one area on her that's really hard to select. The hair on the side over here. Do you notice that really hard for me to select that and kind of get those little strands of hair over there? Well, one of the tools that we have in here is the ability to refine a selection. Now this isn't brand new, but this is something that has changed a lot of the way that I do some, some of this stuff. So when I select the girl, now I'm going to come in and click on this option to refine the edge, and it pulls up this nice little menu that lets me kind of come in here and feather this just a little bit, so I can get a little feather going there. But see the red there? It puts it on a back background so I can come in and I can roll over this red with my brush. And you're going to watch how easy that is for me to come in and remove some of that stuff in those areas that's really hard to get into. I'm coming in right now and I'm getting in and I'm cleaning up a lot of that red that's around her hair. Okay, you can see that that red is disappearing. Now, if I wanted to do this completely, I'm going to have to zoom in and I'm going to have to really refine my mask, right, as I kind of come in and do this. But you can see that with some of these tools, I am cleaning up that red in just a matter of seconds, which before, 
would have been almost impossible. Okay, if I kind of zoom back out on that, I again I haven't gone all the way on that, but when I'm done, if I say that I want to select that, you can see I'm going to select that as a new layer with a layer mask, and now that girl, I can pull her out of this photo, and I could put her into any other photo. Now, I didn't go all the way on that one, but you can see that I've got a pretty good edge. I could take her out and put her into any number of backgrounds. Well, that was a pretty fast half hour for us. Um, but I hope you've seen some of the power of having the latest version of some of these great Adobe tools. You know, like I said, most of the stuff I've tried for years to do things with the older programs, and some of it's just not that easy. It's just really not, not possible to do in some of the older programs. So I mentioned this. If your district is a district that has adopted the Creative Cloud, I know that some of the programs weren't installed on machines because of when the licenses were signed. So if your school only does a, um, you know, uh, an image of your of your school computers once a year, you may be not receiving this until the fall this year. But very worth your effort and a great tool to play around with and explore. Um, I'm just going to go back and see if there are any questions, and uh, we'll let Tim kind of take over while we look for those.